Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently, we did a video talking about the best third-party or aftermarket camera app for iOS, and we narrowed it down to four. They were Filmic Pro, Movie Pro, Kinematic, and ProShot. In this video, I'm gonna take you through all the settings you need to know to get the best settings with ProShot. Now, before we jump into it, why should you be using a third party or an aftermarket camera app for creating your videos on your iPhone? The biggest reason is that it will give you full manual controls and controls that pretty much mimic what you would find on a DSLR or on a video camera so that you can lock everything down. And that way you're in control of your shot instead of leaving everything to auto and having things potentially change during your shot. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step all the settings you need to know to get the best results using ProShot on your iPhone. All right, so here we are in ProShot. The first thing you wanna do is to set the camera to video and adjust the video settings. So we do that by pressing in the bottom right-hand corner here. And we slide this bar around here until we get to video. So our video settings here, we've got the choice of our resolution first off, which for this phone, which is an iPhone 6, we get the choice of 720 or 1080p. You can see that 4K is an option there in the software, but it's not supported by this phone. So if you do have that as an option in your phone, probably an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, then I'd suggest selecting the highest quality, which is 4K. And next up below that is the frame rate, which you can see we've got the choice of 24, 25, 30, 48, 50, and 60. It's also grayed out 100, 120, and 240. Now, if you're filming your videos in Australia or in the UK, then you'll wanna set your frame rate to 25. If you're in the US, then you wanna be using 30. Now, if you're after some smoother motion video, then you could choose 50 frames per second if you're in Australia or the UK, 60 if you're in the US, so double the initial frame rate. Or if you're looking for slow motion, then you've got options for 100, 120, and 240. But those will only be accessible if you lower the resolution on this device anyway, to 720p. So we'll switch that back to 1080, and we'll pick 25 because we're in Australia. So those are our video settings that we've locked down there. So now we'll just press on the little button down the corner here to get back to the main camera app. We can see that those settings are in effect because we've got 1080p and 25 selected here on our record button. The next thing you wanna make sure is that you're in manual mode. So we see at the top here, we've got an M. You wanna long press on that and make sure that you are actually on M for manual mode. So that's where we'll get manual control over the shutter, the exposure, the ISO, white balance and flash. So we wanna make sure we're on manual. And then we can adjust those settings. So we'll come down here and we'll adjust our shutter speed first. So we'll press on shutter. Now the ideal shutter speed if you're in Australia or the UK is one over 50 or 1 50th of a second. If you're in the US, then it's one over 60 or 1 60th of a second. Now you can also set these to a multiple of that number. Now the reason that you wanna to stick to either the 50 or the 60 and the multiple of that number is so that you're removing any chance of there being any flickering or strobing in your videos from any lights that are used in the room you're recording in. So we'll set our shutter speed to one over 50 here and then we'll click anywhere else to get out of that. Next up, we'll adjust the brightness of our shot using the ISO. So we'll come up here and touch on ISO. Now how an ISO works is the lower the number, the darker the picture, the higher the number, the brighter the picture. So you can see if we switch to 160, it's a bit darker, 100, it's a bit darker again, all the way down to low. Now there is also an auto setting here, but I'd suggest that you manually lock this down so that it's got no chance of moving or adjusting while you're filming your videos. So it's a matter of picking then the brightness here that matches your scene. So for this, 100 is looking pretty good. So we'll tap off that there now. And it's also important to note with the ISO that it is essentially a digital brightness. So the higher you go, the brighter you make your image, you can start to introduce noise or grain into your image, which will really lower the quality of your video. Now, if you are filming outdoors and you've set your shutter to one over 50 or one over 60, and you've adjusted your ISO and your shot is still too bright, then you can darken your shot by going back into the shutter and you can increase your shutter speed. So you could go 250, 320, 500. And really at this point, if you're outside filming and you're not using any lights that are gonna bring any flickering or strobing into your video, then you can increase your shutter speed as high as you need to in order to get the shot brightness where you need it. So we'll lock this back here at one over 50. 
The next setting that we need to look at is your white balance. So we'll click on white balance here now, and you've got your presets in here that you'd normally find on most cameras. So things like candlelight, fluorescent, flash, overcast. I'd highly recommend using one of these presets for white balance instead of just leaving it on auto so that, that way your color temperature doesn't change in your shot while you're actually recording if something changes in your scene or a cloud comes over outside and changes the light you don't want your color temperature changing so you can also set it to manual as well which is where you get this slider down the bottom and you can see that as we make the adjustments here we go to the right or increasing the number we're getting a much warmer or yellow look in our image as we go to the left we're going to get a much cooler or blue image. So it's about finding the spot that either matches the lights in your scene or to where it looks the best for the look that you're after. Once you're happy with that, just select anywhere on the screen to get out of that menu. Now the last thing we need to do is to lock down your focus. So it's just a matter of pointing and moving this circle around to whatever you'd like to have in focus in your shot. Once you let go, the focus point will be locked at that point. So for an example here, we'll bring my hand into the shot. I'll move this dial over to focus on my hand. And it's locked on there now. So when I remove my hand, the focus is locked at that point. So those are all the settings that you need to lock down in order to get the best results with your videos using ProShot. Now before you jump in and start recording your videos, I suggest that you record a short 15 to 20 second clip, test your audio, make sure the shot is looking exactly how you'd like before you jump in and you record your videos. So that's how you can set up ProShot for the best results with your videos. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click that big subscribe button if you haven't already, and check out the video linked on screen if you wanna know how to make professional videos with your iPhone. I'll see you soon.